Hi, I'm Hilke, and welcome to my World Machine tutorial series. In this video, I want to cover the displacement device, which can be found in the filter tab. Displacement, sometimes called distortion or warping, pushes and smears pixels around, creating for a distorted result. It can create cool and intricate features that would otherwise be hard to achieve, and is at the core of many terrains generated in World Machine. It can also be used to create really abstract features or to break up smooth or unnatural straight features in terrain, for example the terrain generated by a Foronoi device. Let's open the properties and discuss the port of the device. The distortion device has five properties. The first property, type, determines how the distortion is calculated. The default, angle and distance lets you control the direction and distance of the distortion separately using the direction and distance parameters, with the distance parameter behaving as a slider to determine the strength of the effect. When set to factor x and y, the direction parameter is disabled, and you can only control the distance of the distortion. The last type, use transformer input, lets you hook up an external distortion generator or transform device, which will be covered in another episode. For now, let's set the type back to angle and distance, and hook up a radial grid to the primary input so we can see what we're doing. The distance parameter, as said earlier on, allows us to determine the strength of the distortion effect. By default, it is set to zero, and when we increase the value, we see the terrain starts to move. When changing the value of the direction parameter, the direction of the distortion changes and rotates counterclockwise. As you may have noticed, below the primary input, there are two more inputs, being the distortion angle and distortion distance, which are guides for the distortion and influence the behavior of the direction and distance parameters. These let you connect height maps to control the direction and distance of distortion. Let's hook up two constant devices to both inputs to get a better feeling for it. For the direction, zero height means to offset the distortion's direction with zero degrees and a higher value will offset the direction counterclockwise, with max height being 360 degrees. The distance guide works differently and also depends on the bidirectional checkbox, and for now, let's uncheck it. Instead of offsetting the distance, this guide acts more like a mask, where zero height means a distance equivalent to zero meters, and a max height a distance equivalent to the distance parameter's value, meaning that the distance parameter ultimately determines how much the terrain is distorted. When the bidirectional checkbox is checked, the behavior changes. As the name suggests, the distortion will now work in both directions. But how does that work? Instead of zero height translating to zero distance, zero height means now full distance in the opposite direction. The middle height, in my case 1275 meters, is translated to zero distance, and max height is still full distance in the original direction. The current effect is not at all that interesting, and the true power of the distortion device is when we connect it to a noise generator. By adding a basic noise and connecting it to the distortion distance guide, we get an interesting result. Because the noise does not have the same value for each pixel, the distortion distance for each pixel on the radio grad's terrain is different resulting in this distorted terrain. Something similar happens when connecting it to the distortion direction guide. But instead of each pixel distorting a varying distance, the direction in which each pixel is distorted is now different. When connecting the basic noise to both inputs, we get yet another result, because both the direction and distance are now modulated. When setting the type to factor x and y, the role of the two inputs change and are renamed to distortion x component and distortion y component. We hook up both the constant devices to the input again to get some feeling for it and uncheck the bidirectional checkbox. I will also rename the constant devices to x and y and I will stick the property windows to the side panel. Let me reset the values. The X determines the amount of distortion in the X axis, that is, from left to right and vice versa. 
and the y determines the amount of distortion in the y axis, also known as up and down. As you can see, when we increase the height of both the constant devices and set it to the same value, the radial grass terrain is moved to the top right, along a 45 degree angle. The last parameter, edge handling, let us determine how the displacement device handles pixels at the edges, especially pixels that go outside of our frame and pixels that should come into our frame. Before discussing the different modes, let me briefly explain why this is necessary. In contrast to generator devices, every other device in World Machine only knows of the terrain passed through its input. This means that everything outside our terrain, or height field, is unknown. When we displace our terrain, we move around pixels, and if all pixels were moved to the right, World Machine doesn't know what pixels come from the left, and therefore needs a method to fill in those pixels, dubbed edge handling. The default mirror interior will mirror the terrain if pixels go out of bounds. If all pixels shift to the right, the terrain will be mirrored on the left side. With a radial grid, this effect is not really visible, but if we connect it to the basic noise, this becomes clear. When we set the X to full height and the distance to 4 kilometers, we now see a terrain that is vertically mirrored. This method creates the smoothest transitions and is often the method to use. Underneath mirror interior, we have opposite side, and it does exactly as its name suggests, just looping the terrain around. We see a distinct edge appearing, and at the top, we have repeat edge, which copies the values of the pixels at the edge, creating for its glitchy and smeared outlook, which is quite funny, but most of the time not all that useful. Because of this problem near the edges, using the displacement device for big terrain defining features is something I recommend against. Instead, try using the distortion implemented in the generator device, or connect the distortion generator device to the generator device's transform input. The latter option is something I will cover in another episode. However, this is only possible for generator devices, and if you want to distort the flow map of an erosion device, the only option is the displacement device, and because these distortions are often small, you will most of the time not have any issues with the edges, and this filter is excellent to break up shapes. That's the displacement device, it's an important filter device and is at the core of many terrains. See ya!